Hey everybody, Omar here, the Knife Shark Guy, and I am back with another fun filled video for you. And today's video will be a discussion video. My top five favorite South African customs. Uh, I was going to go with, with these uh, five knives as my top five, and I had difficulty doing that. So I decided to make it my top six. So we'll just go over uh, all these knives real quickly. Why they're my favorites. These are all just uh, personal preference. And why I do in enjoy these knives uh, as my top six. Um, this collection of six was basically chosen for different reasons. Some of them could be action. Some of them could be the materials that, that were used to put on the knife. Sometimes it's ergos. Uh, it could be anything. But there was something on the knife that was so overwhelming that it had to make this list. So let's just get started. So the first one we're going to look at is my JD Van uh, Deventer. This is the JD Van Deventer Midi Flipper. Uh, this is a uh, this is sort of a medium sized knife. It's also quite different because it's not uh, unlike all the other knives here on the table. Um, this one is what's called a forward flipper, meaning it's it's not really a regular flipper or it's not a front flipper knife. This knife is actually a forward flipper where they just sort of uh, take the flipper and instead of having this protruding piece sticking out, what the, what they do here is they actually uh, kind of flatten it down and uh, re-sculpt it so that this top part is where you would grab to flip the knife rather than on the side here like this one. Uh, so I thought that was kind of unique. Another reason that I chose it is because the knife is blue. Uh, blue seems to be a weakness of mine when I collect my customs. Um, it's like my favorite color, black and blue, and this one was really screaming at me when I saw it. Uh, I love, absolutely love black marble carbon fiber. I don't think I've ever seen it look quite so like 3D in effect like this knife here. It's just absolutely stunning. Uh, another reason why this is a favorite of mine was the action. Uh, this knife does not even run on ceramic bearings. It runs on regular steel bearings. I haven't even oiled it and this thing is drop shot practically. This is a lot of fun to flip. Also love the pocket clip, that zirconium pocket clip. The whole beam of the knife is just absolutely gorgeous. This is basically a painting as a knife and it's really an amazing, amazing piece. Love it. Uh, so the next one is the uh, Lex K by uh, Trevor Berger. I have the smaller EXK, but I was really after this larger version of the knife, and I'm so happy that I got this one. This one really isn't anything uh, super special. In other words, it's not a one of a kind. But the reason I love the knife, number one, the smoothness of it is just amazing. It's the only knife that I, I actually own where... Uh, I actually feel the closing of the knife as, you know, an experience. I know that sounds weird. Uh, and, of course, the uh, carbon fiber inlay on it is uh, quite stunning also. It's got kind of like a 3D effect if you hold it in the light there uh, at certain angles. It's really very pretty. Uh, love, love, love the stone wash blade on this one. And the ergos are just absolutely spectacular. Uh, so this actually winds up in my pocket quite a bit during the week while I'm working. Sometimes I'll carry it like two days in a row just because I can't, you know, just because it affects me that much as, as, as an EDC carry. Uh, the stone wash or acid wash finish is really nice because you can use the hell out of the knife and not have to worry about uh, getting scratches on it. The blue or the slate blue colored accents on it with the pivot ring and the pocket clip and the back spacer makes a really nice theme uh, so that this one definitely had to make my my top six uh, for that reason alone as I said before the next one was a surprise 
Uh, I heard about Clyde Chalinor before I got this knife, um, but I never really expected that, that I would ever actually get one. Uh, I, I got his knife at a transitioning time in his life as a knife maker. He had, he had gone away for a while, uh, and then he came back. Um, so I was like, actually able to, to snag one of his masterpieces. Uh, and this really made my, uh, my top six for several reasons. Um, first of all, uh, I don't think I've ever seen a knife maker pay so much attention to detail. Uh, for example, if you take a look at the uh, pivot, look how nice and smooth that is. I mean, that sucker is like super duper, it's so flat you can barely even feel between the titanium and <laughs> the pivot here. Uh, that was kind of surprising to me. Plus, the little things that he does, like he actually polishes those little screws on the knife that they pop. I don't know very many knife, knife makers that do that, but he does it. He really does it. Secondly, he puts another inlay on the back side of a knife. Uh, that's a rarity. There aren't that many knife makers that do that. Uh, and this knife, not only that, but he's got the smoothness on this one. Tuned in perfect. Perfect by, I mean, in a sense that, I mean, some knives are just overly smooth. Uh, which is fine. But, I mean, it, it would be kind of nice if they could actually tune it to where you have some control. And uh, Clyde Chalmore has done that on this piece. And I'm sure this is what it's like for all of his customs that leave his shop. Uh, he's just a master at making a knife the way a regular, uh, the way a collector would like. The reason he's able to do that is because the man is a collector of knives himself. He actually has, and I know this firsthand, in his collection, probably... <laughs> One knife from all the guys on this table. I mean, he's he's just a knife collector. Uh, he's only been making knives, I'm going to say, for roughly about eight years. Uh, and he has really come into his own. I mean, this guy's sort of like the James Dean of knife making. Uh, just a big, big surprise. And he makes frame locks, which are even harder to make than uh, as a custom knife than liner locks in a lot of ways because you have to compete with all the bling on a lot of these liner lock knives and uh Clyde Chalmore is able to do that easily he puts so much attention to detail you actually forget you own a frame lock the Damascus blade on this is absolutely beautiful uh really love the open construction on it and finally the ergonomics on a Clyde Chalmore cannot be beat it's almost like, you know, he's got this knife fit. It's almost like you were in the shop and he measured your hand and said, here, uh, let me know how this feels. And I, you know, I was completely blown away by this piece. Plus the fact that you don't even really realize that you get a full-size knife. This is a full-size 3.5 inch knife and it's almost the same size as this Trevor Burger which is actually not a full-size knife. I mean, not really anyway. It's a mid, mid-size. These two are like mid-size knife, size knives. This is actually a full 3.5 inch blade. So the whole knife is a work of art and it's an illusion at the same time. You don't think it's a full-size knife and yet it is. So that's why I made my list. The fourth one on my list is an Arucas Plumeris one-of-a-kind full dress piece, which is why it made my list. There is not one part of this knife that does not have any art on it. It's an artistic canvas piece all the way, and it's also, I hate to say this, but it's also my only safe queen. I have not used this knife yet. Uh, I don't even know if I'm gonna. I just, I, and I don't really see why I need to. Um, safe queens are kind of like, uh, you know, uh, it's almost, he you know, a heretic in a way. You know, why do you buy a knife and never actually use it? Well, you know, if they look like this, would you use it? I mean, it's just absolutely gorgeous. Uh, overall, we have blue Timascus bolsters, uh, with a black marble carbon fiber, uh, scale on it. 
Uh, then we have this beautiful rope file work on the back of the knife with a Damascus bolts, uh, backspacer. Beautiful blue titanium uh, pocket clip to match with the uh, ball. I guess it would be like a, a large detent ball, I'm going to call that. That's what it is. It's just a really beautiful blue piece of artwork that I really can't find myself to use it. The smoothness factor on this is perfect. I mean, it runs on ceramic bearings. That was another thing that I wanted to mention about the Clyde Chalmor knife. Uh, this does not run on some... I'm not sure if this runs on ceramic bearings. I don't think it does. It's just regular steel. And uh, yet, it's so smooth. So yeah, uh, the Arucus Blumeris, I believe this is the L15 model. I'll have to check on that. Uh, but yeah, this is my only full full dress pace knife. The next one is a knife that actually made me as collector. I posted this thing on Instagram and everybody went insane over it. This is like, every time I pull this knife out, it's like I feel like I'm Elvis or... Uh, <laughs> You know, it feels like Elvis is coming out or something like that. In fact, that's probably what I'm going to name this knife, Elvis. Uh, it's just what I call my eagle knife. Uh, it's artistically put together, literally as a canvas. The knife is made by Andre Thorburn. Andre Thorburn is a knife maker who is able to take a basic folder and build a painting around that, around the folder which is what he's done here. And he does that for all of his knives. Uh, obviously, with the help of his wife, Marguerite, she does all the bolster work on, on the knives. But this one was literally a masterpiece in a sense that this is kind of like, I don't know if you guys are old enough to remember the Beatles, but this is kind of like Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band of a Knife, right? Where it's just artistically spectacular. We've got... Uh, you know, an eagle on the front of the knife, and on the bottom we have this white Westinghouse micarta, which kind of reminds you of the beak of an eagle, because, you know, the beak, some beaks of eagles actually have that browning stripe there, uh, and then it's like white all over. I mean, it's literally, it's like an eagle slammed onto my knife, and both uh, Andre Thorburn and his wife Marguerite did a fantastic job with this one. Uh, this is a one-of-a-kind handmade knife, so it had to be in my in my collection, definitely. It's also my very first true custom, meaning this is the very first custom knife that I ever bought that was made for me. I actually had input in making of this knife and how I wanted it to look, and Andre uh, just hit it out right out of the ballpark. Uh, so this is also in my pocket quite a lot. And sadly, I constantly forget to um, post it. Because <laughs> I can't wait for the day to come when I get to carry this one again. So, uh, But I'll start posting it more just because it's, it's such a standout in my collection. Uh, the last top six in my collection. Uh, I hate to say this, but this is probably going to be the number one knife in my top six uh is it my favorite i can't say that it is but it winds up in my pocket more often than i'd like to admit um and i'll explain why first of all the knife is made by legendary knife maker des warren he's practically one of the fathers of south african knife making him and a gentleman named owen wood and i don't even own any owen wood knives at this time and i really would love to um just to show kind of like the contrast between both these knife makers. Uh, but Des Horn, he's been around for years and years and years. Guy used to be a dentist and then he decided to go into knife making and he makes absolutely spectacular works of art. This knife doesn't even look anywhere near what the capabilities of what this man can do with a knife. Uh, you need to take a look at, some, at his website because he has got some real, real uh, metallic works of art uh, that they would all wind up as safe queens if I owned any one of those particular knives. Um, 
But in any case, uh, this is the Death's Horn in Boo Boo knife. Um, this is really a knife that's not even on Death's Horn's website. I think he uses this knife as a calling card because he wants you to buy the knives that he's really proud of. Uh, and those knives are like incredibly expensive, but if you ever were to buy one, they would definitely be worth it. Um, this one's also up there for, you know, well, not for me, it's not considered up there anymore since I've been collecting South African customs. But for some of you guys, yeah, this might be out of your price range for right now. It doesn't mean that it's going to be in the future because I will guarantee you eventually you're going to wind up somewhere buying knives in this price range. So don't think price range uh, is a hierarchy thing or anything. It's not. This is going to happen to all of you guys. I believe that. Um... But this is the uh, Deshorn and Boo Boo. The reason I love this piece is, again, it's blue. Uh, the laminate on this piece is just absolutely spectacular. Uh, the blue on the knife, it kind of sparkles to like this glittery blue and then the slate gray and it constantly changes in the light. I love that. I also love the pocket clip and how it matches with the whole theme of the knife. Uh, we have a carbon fiber full carbon fiber back spacer not something i see too much on knives a full spacer from the bottom all the way up to the top i really love that uh that's one of the things that i love about knives i either want a, a completely open construction like it is here on my uh clyde chalnor viper um or a completely closed so that's another reason that's another one of my quirks when i collect is you know is the is the back of the knife either fully open or closed i'm not a big fan of those half backspacers but as you can see i do take them and i do like them also i just rather i'm someone that kind of enjoys continuity uh and you know what i'm looking at so either full or none at all kind of attracts me um the knife also has a very special steel uh that requires i mean serious serious understanding of how the steel works in order to put it on a knife and this one is a master of it the name of the steel is called nitrobe 77 uh it goes through a rigorous uh heat treatment a lot of knife makers don't even want to come near this steel because it's such a pain in the ass to treat again it goes through a uh a, a rigorous heat treatment process and then it is dipped in liquid nitrogen four times to give it strength so that it's pretty much oversees just about a lot of the steels that are out there. Uh, this thing holds incredible edge retention, and this sucker is scary, scary sharp. Uh, and, yeah, and you can check that out on my channel because I've done a review on this, and I believe I did do a paper cut test on it. Finally, the last reason I love this knife, uh, all the knives here on the table run on ball bearings, either ceramic or steel. Not this one. This one just runs on regular old brass washers. And as you can see, this sucker is drop shut. I'm not even, I'm barely even jerking it, and it closes all the way. Uh, I don't know how the man does that. And there's no blade play on this knife. This knife is solid as a rock. Usually with uh, washer knives, to get this effect, you kind of have to loosen it maybe a touch. But... Not with this one. I don't know how he does that, but it is. You, people have actually flipped this knife when I've handed it to them, and they thought, uh, "What kind of what kind of ball bearings is it on?" <laughs> I said, "It's not on ball bearings. It's just on regular washers." And uh, you know, since then, uh, I think for Des Horn, this knife has kind of like become a curse because people love this knife so much because it's. It's like a regular everyday EDC carry, but there's some serious artwork on here. Uh, and I don't, I really don't think this horn appreciates it as much as a collector like myself does. I mean, again, the action is beautiful. Right? Uh, the choice of carbon fiber on it makes it beautiful. Uh, the ergos on it are just spectacular for me. I love the way it feels. The steel is fantastic. I mean, it's just a really, really beautiful knife overall and a work of art. So there you have it. My top, supposedly going to be my top five, but now I've made it my top six because of the Clyde Chalmore piece, which really 
really had to make this collection. Uh, there was no way it wasn't going to, so we decided to make it a top six. So there you have it, my top six South African knives out of the 34 that I own. It was a hard decision to make, uh, but I got news for you. Because I'm buying knives and selling knives, this collection may change, or it may not change, I don't know. Because right now, I see these six as six knives that I am definitely going to keep no matter what. Uh, that's not to say that I'm ever going to sell any of the other ones that I have in my collection, but like I say, these six wind up in my pocket more so often than any of the other knives that are in my collection. I mean, I, I do rotate them quite a bit. I have used all of the knives in my knife collection, but I haven't used this one. <coughs> Just can't get around to doing it. Um, so, you know, I... I'm kind of proud of this collection. I constantly put it out on Instagram all the time. I just posted these six online. I'm getting positive reactions from everybody uh, on Instagram. It's a wonderful uh, community to belong to, the knife community. Um, everybody respects everyone's taste. And uh, I just want to, you know, say that I really do appreciate everyone uh, for being on my channel and um, seeing me grow as a knife collector. The collection is going to continue. Um, I've got knives coming, not anytime soon, but uh, Clyde Chalnor, I'm in the works to have two knives with this guy. Uh, so you'll be seeing those sometime in, in the future. Uh, finances is such though, that right now we have to kind of lay back. <laughs> Gotta know when to do that. And the knife makers aren't rushing me to uh, buy one, but the but you know getting those knives uh, from Clyde Chalmore, uh that's in the works. So anyway, I just wanted to share my top six. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Please comment and like and subscribe down at the bottom. I hope I say that often enough, but yeah, please like and subscribe down at the bottom. Uh, I would like to get to a thousand subscribers. Uh, I am now at 400, so that's, or getting closer to 400, so that's something. Uh, in any case, I will see you guys next week in the next video. Not sure what I'll be doing, but I'll come up with something, and uh, I'll see you guys later. Thanks so much, and have a great Saturday evening.